So Etche Learning is a uh, strange name. Etche is, uh, has two meanings. It has the meanings that um, Etche is in the Bible. Here it is, you know, in the, uh, in the story about the origin of the world. And Etche also means European Center for Continuing Education. So that's how the name came. And, um, you know, I have been involved in education all my academic time, which is 40 years now. And I realized that the way how we educate uh, has to change because the society is changing. When you go somewhere in a train, in an airport, in a restaurant, everywhere the people are doing this. Uh, they are all the time online. They are all occupied with all these devices. And, um, and they, you know, when you look in the television business, less and less people want to have fixed programs. They want programs on demand. If you look uh, into the newspaper business, only the people older than 65, they really are subscribing for a regular uh, newspaper uh, every day and things like that. So I think we have to adapt to what's happening in the society. And the young uh, doctors who come out of medical school and they go in a specialization, they want also to learn their way. That means they want to learn when they want, when they have time, and more as possible cost-effective. I don't think that the future young doctors can afford to travel around to go all the seminars because it's time, wasted time in airports, in trains, in, 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 in the traffic. Um, they don't want to spend money for hotels and things like that. So I think a big part of what we do with lectures, we can do, in fact, online. That doesn't mean that you can replace the interaction between the senior and the junior uh, people. I think uh, medicine is a um, uh, narrative science. It's not an exact science. So we learn on cases, and that means we have the knowledge what you can acquire for your own. You have to apply in patients, and this is where you need an interaction, where we do also integrate these live tutorials in, in this program. So what is available at the moment on the platform? So this platform, just to, what to say, this is a postgraduate education platform. Uh, this is uh, probably, to our knowledge, the first one, which is completely comprehensive. Yeah, there's a lot of graduate studies and undergraduate studies on platforms, but not postgraduate studies. And at the moment, uh, we have um, three modules which are running. This is by purpose. There are totally nine uh, modules, and we will open at the end of the month the next three modules, and then at the end of July the next three modules. So these nine modules include 180 lectures. And the point of these lectures is that you know, it's like in the lecture hall, you have a guy who talks, but as he or she cites references, you just have it an icon on your, on your screen and you make a click, so one mouse click away, you have a, uni, uh, a huge universe of learning, book chapters, videos, surgical films, original papers and so on. We have, uh, of course, um, worked with publishers, we have licenses to do that, and um, so People don't need to go to the library or go to PubMed to, so, uh, to look for themselves. They have everything available. So it's more than 4,500 additional knowledge sources which are available in these uh, this nine modules. There are about, uh, 127 lectures, uh, international uh, lectureship, all quite experienced uh, spine surgeons as well as teachers. So there's a lot available on the platform at the moment. Yes, uh, at the moment there are already more than 60 lectures. That means three models. Uh, every model has approximately, in the average, 20 lectures. And every lecture goes between 25 to 60 minutes, depending on the topic. You're also heavily involved uh, with the Open Operating Theatre. I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about uh, what's available there. Yes, the Open Operating Theatre, this is... Uh, by the way, like um, Edge Learning is an initiative of the European Spine Journal. And um, this is now going for almost 10 years. We started uh, to create a platform where we wanted to put surgical films, films from the surgery theatre. So that's why it's open operating theatre, so it's accessible. And in the meantime, we have about 200 films. Um, many of these films are of very high uh, quality, of broadcast quality. 
and we have uh, refined this, uh, this filming over the years and we are now working with a very new technology with the Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. So we don't need all these film machines anymore. <laughs> so the surgeon has, uh, has a tool with which he can do all these films. So this is of course, um, you know, it's many of the searches, what you can do are not just one film, there are maybe three, four films from prominent surgeons all over the world. So it's like in music, when you go, you want to listen to a piano concerto, you can listen it from, an, uh, you know, from Barenboim, or you can listen it from, uh, from Clara Hoskill or whatever, you know. So every one of the surgeons has his own specific uh, way to do things, and that's how people can learn. It's interactive also to a certain degree. You, uh, you, it's, a, it's a program, you have an abstract, uh, you have literature, um, you have questions to answer and things like that. So it's a, it's, it's a learning platform on the base of films. Um, now we also have some lectures, master lectures there. So it's not just surgical films, it's expanding over time. Yes. So you've mentioned a, a, a lot of uh, digital options um, for education, for spine surgery. Um, I also wondered how you think uh, uh, things like Eurospine and other conferences will still play a role in the future as these digital technologies grow? Yeah, I think that's a, a very good question. And of course, we are talking with uh, Eurospine. I'm one of the founders of this society and I was the president of this society. I personally believe, but I'm an old guy, but I, should, I think obviously like a very young guy, I think this, this meeting, these huge meetings, uh, in this sense, they will disappear because there's no money for that, because the companies are no longer allowed to finance that in this way. And I think the role of the, um, the digitalization will become more and more important and these meetings will more focus on clinical problems where you need an interaction, really, but not on teaching or facts that you can listen anywhere, everywhere, at any time when you want. You don't need to travel in a, in a lecture hall for that. I'm convinced that this is going to change fundamentally.